Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to a live edition of the Narrative Podcast. The Narrative Podcast is the home of original people, peace, reciprocity, and positive frames of reference. And I'm your host, Halsey Allen. Welcome all my narrators. Welcome anyone uh, that's just now tuning in and unfamiliar with the platform. Welcome to you this evening. I'll bring you up to speed about my platform in just a second. So, you know, welcome everybody in. Welcome, come on in the room. Welcome on this fine, lovely Wednesday evening. I cannot believe this month is flying. It's almost gone. It seemed like just last week it got here. But um, yeah, rocking and rolling for sure. You were Halsey Allen on a narrative podcast this weekend, or this Wednesday, excuse me. Um, this is a live edition of the Narrative Podcast. I think I already said that, but um, uh, let me dispense with all that and uh, bring all the new people up to speed about my platform, my content, and um, you know my overall goals for this uh, space that I'm occupying. So let's start at the top, Tippy, with the name Narrative. What's the significance of that? I named my podcast the Narrative Podcast because the media we use a false narrative about original people and the original culture. So I would de- design a platform to set that right. Um, in the media, they basically you know focus the lens on all the negativity within our culture. Um, they depict our pe- people in a, a negative light and make us look and sound a certain way. And um, basically, it's uh, primarily to sell news, but then also to program and condition the minds of the, of the masses, um, make people outside of our culture think we're a certain way, and th- therefore they treat us a certain way. And because of that treatment, we get ostracized out of um, tangibles and, um, you know, other things we're supposed to have. Um, not only that, you know, it's a uh, psychological warfare. The way they set it up, they program and condition us into, you know, viewing ourselves a certain way with the uh, content that they keep on um, flooding the airways with about our people. So like I said, um, they basically do it for profit and to, you know, psychologically control the minds of the masses. Um, My ultimate takeaway, I want my listeners to gain from my content, if nothing else, is to realize the importance of why it's so important to share positive content about our people and our culture online. Um, You know, news is a a billion dollar a year industry. Uh, A lot of these Fortune 500 companies, you know, they um, extrapolate all their data from, you know, these days about what people are posting online and they uh, create content based around their, uh, you know, their um, digital research, their uh, statistics, you know, seeing what people is posting seeing, you know, what people are clicking on. Um, So just imagine our people in this grand scheme of things, if we're always, you know, posting negative content, if we're always posting gang culture, gun culture, drug culture, um, you know, pimp culture, whore culture, thought culture, drug culture. This is, you know, what they collect their data and they create content and products based around their data. 
So this is why we have all these this crappy television programming. This is why um, we have all this uh, crap these crappy movies with us starring in them, depicted in a negative light. This is why we have all these crappy articles. Um, the way we're depicted in um, periodicals in uh, literature. You know, this is just based off statistics what people believe our people act like and talk like and um, supposed to be. So therefore, when a foreign shot um, keeper comes, you know, into our neighborhood, you know, they ne never grew up around us, they never talked to us, they're just given, you know, these negative frames of reference and they believe that's how they're supposed to uh, speak to us and treat us just based, based off, you know, the, uh, pot, the uh, frames of reference that they're giving. So this is our task. This is why I call my listening audience my nail raiders. Because we live in a digital age now and people basically judge you based on what you're posting online. You know, they associate your, um, you know, ideals, beliefs, and value systems about what you're posting online. So we got the unique opportunity to narrate or tell our stories. So we're all content creators in some small capacity. Um, we can kind of control the narrative of how our people and our cultures perceive just solely based on what we're posting online. Like you occupy whatever platform you have, you can post whatever content you like. But just know it comes at a consequence. There's always some positive activity going on in the world, within our uh, cultures and our neighborhoods, uh, our families, you know. So that's what we should be using our uh, digital spaces for, you know, making our stories known, narrating our stories. We should be posting stories about, you know, family structure, unity, uh, you know, triumphing in the face of adversity, uh, you know, just the opposite of the way we're uh, being depicted in the media and the way we're always being depicted in the media is, you know, stupid, lazy, buffoonish, um, living in depravity, living in violence, um, you know, just basically no way out, hopeless, downtrodden, you know, just basically unsalvageable as, a, as, as people. That's the way we're portrayed, you know, the, the way the lens, the media focuses that lens on us. So here on the Narrative Podcast, I rectify that by providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. As a matter of fact, my tagline is the Narrative Podcast, changing the narrative one episode at a time by destroying negative stereotypes about original people and original culture. How do I destroy the negative stereotypes? I provide positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. Um, this is a live edition of the Narrative Podcast, and the way I do that is I share um, articles that come across my radar, as well as deliver commentary on breaking news, and, you know, change the narrative that way. Just putting positivity out in the atmosphere and um, delivering a fresh perspective of our people and about our culture. Um, another thing about my platform, I refer to uh, our people as original people versus black. And the reason why I do that is because in early civilization, um, we originated written language and spoken language. And we, we created the word black originally, it meant something positive, but the powers that be came and flipped the narrative and um, gave it a negative meaning and that negative meaning that they have uh, given the word black is kind of ingrained in us as a people now. See, originally it meant strength, originally it meant beauty, originally it meant wealth, originally it meant, you know, 
health, um, opulence, um, just all things positive was associated with the word black. But over time, the narrative got flipped and, you know, they associated black with, you know, un being uh, disunfortunate or unfortunate, unlucky, you know, black, dark. Um, they also associated with uh, death, disease, dying, and the end of all things. That's what black basically means these days. You know, it's like the worst thing ever. You go to any dictionary at the source, look up the word black for dictionary. Well, you know, because the thesaurus is just like synonyms and stuff, but um, in a di dictionary, you look up the word black and you will notice that um, that color is the only color in the dictionary that denotes origin. So before they come to all these negative descriptors, these nouns, pronouns, adjectives, parts of English speech, you know, they go out of their way to say, you know, they usually start out um, black, you know, people with a dark pigment or, you know, a dark skinned people, you know, originating from Africa. And then they go on down the line, they just like really on the slick start with the negativities, all these negative, you know, example sentences and how to use the word black and all these other words associated with the word black. Like I said, death, dying, chaos, uh, destruction, um, you know, unholiness, un being dirty, uh, all these negative things associated with the word black. But the one thing that's not is original. You know, you go to original, there's no negative connotation surrounding the word original. Original basically means the beginning of uh, all things. And, um, you know, in many cases, original means uh, the best. Like, it means the first and it means the best. I think that's more uh, of, you know, an accurate depiction of who we are as a people versus black because we were here 5,000 years before everybody else. There was not one uh, corner of the globe that we didn't originally inhabit. Um, you know, while slavery was very uh, real, while slavery was very brutal, um, we were definitely a part of the slave trade, but, you know, we did not get to all these other places in the world via slavery, via, uh, you know, chattel slavery or the transatlantic slavery it was already originally in many parts of the globe, pretty much everywhere. You name a place, we was already originally there. There was our people, people that looked like us already occupying some part of the globe, period. Especially here in the Americas. Um, yeah, so like, yeah, I try to refer to our people as um, original as often as possible in place of the word black. I say black just to like um, break up, you know, the monotony or the mystery of, you know, what I'm talking about. Um, or if I'm reading an article like tonight, if it says black in the article, I'm not gonna say an original man or original woman. If it says, if it literally says black in an article that I might be reading out loud, so yeah. <clears throat> so now that you got a gist of the platform, I'm going to dive right on into the content. Um, another thing is I try to, you know, make my um, platform time sensitive. I don't like to go over one hour when I'm broadcasting, uh, especially when I'm live. Um, I go over, if I have time allotted, I go over my, um, you know, uh, format for a uh, full broadcast of the narrative podcast. If I don't, I'll probably refer you to my previously 
recorded episode, um, I believe episode 212, that was over the weekend. I'll refer you to that before I leave out tonight if I don't have time to walk you through my um, format. But um, yeah, it's a live edition and on live editions what I do is I share positive articles and I deliver commentary on breaking news. So having said that, let's dive in, shall we? provide some positive frames of reference about our people and our culture this evening here on the Narrative Podcast. All right, here we go. This is going to be a super light bite tonight, so I probably will have some time to walk you through, you know, my uh, my full broadcast, my own format for a full broadcast, because these articles are real short this evening, but um, yeah, so my very first article the headline reads young lady wins fifty thousand dollars scholarship awarded from drake yeah not drake the uh school drake the um the rapper trizzy drake gave her fifty thousand dollars um this is kind of old news i don't why, know why it popped up in my feed but um, it's something people don't talk enough about. It probably just, you know, was one of those one and gone things. It's just like it happened in that moment. People stopped talking about it. But this was around um, 2018, 2019. Um, it was actually in his God's Plan video. Uh, the young lady's name is uh, Destiny James. Uh, and how uh, that even came into fruition. Um, she graduated from college, uh, and she wrote on her Instagram, Mama, I mastered it. Daddy, I did it. And then, uh, you know, Drake went in the comments, and he was like, you know, congrats, basically. And from there, you know, I guess he reached out and touched her in a good way and, um, you know, blessed her with the... Uh, financial means to pay for her education or, you know, put something towards her education. Uh, you know, stories like that always go by the wayside. They never show our, our entertainers within our community doing positive things, giving back, reaching back, helping our people. All you ever really see is our entertainers, um, you know, in the rumor mill, getting carted off by the police or, you know, uh, sick or, you know, in some type of uh, love triangle or some, just something weird. It's just never nothing wholesome like that. They always just want to show us again in like doing something negative, saying something negative. But, um, you know, shout out to the brother. Um, for helping that young lady. I haven't found any new information on um, her, like what she's up to now since she's received that money and um, she's graduated college, but um, I am guess she's crushing life, you know? Graduated college and everything. So I'll give a warm narrative podcast round of applause for Destiny James and Trizzy Drake. Drake? <laughs> Drake? <laughs> Can't make my voice go that high. All right, here we go. Next article. Headline reads, the largest black owned mortgage loan uh, company just, just for black people 
to rival Bank of America's 0% down payment program. And the name of the bank is called One United and is owned by Mr. Kevin Cohen, Cohe, C-O-H-E-E-E. Uh, so that was, that was it. That was the article. It didn't, you know, have any more details about, you know, how they came up with the specs, the stats or whatever. Um, but uh, so there you have it as far as banks go. Banks ain't the move to really put your money in. But if you want to put your money in a bank, you know, do like Wesley Snipes, Passengers 57, always bet on black. <laughs> if you're going to put it in the bank, I'm just saying. So give a warm narrative podcast round of applause for One United for rivaling, you know, the system, the infrastructure, the uh, Bank of America 0% down payment program. <clears throat> Alrighty. Told you super short tonight. I'm nearly done. Now this next one is a little bit of a head scratcher, but not a head scratcher. When you know, I read it, you'll find out why. I'm going to do my best because I'm not really sure I understand the whole dynamics of it, but then I do. So let's go on into it. Uh, 12-year-old genius made historical math discovery. The brother's name is Chica. Ophili, if I'm mispronouncing his name, I apologize. He is from Ghana, currently living in the UK by way of Ghana. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna try to break it down as best as I can. Um, I try to just really, when I was taking the notes, hit the um, high points. Um, just I try to like do bulleted points of the most important information because it's kind of a long article. Uh, so basically, essentially, um, in mathematics, you know, two and nine, they was doing like a divisibility test. And they was doing, you know, all the uh, numbers is divisible by uh, two and nine. And during the test, you know, there was no information about the word, you know, the uh, number seven. So this young brother, he comes up, makes his own formula that proves like, you know, there's a whole lot more numbers that's divisible by seven, basically. Uh, in his formula, you take the last digit of any whole number, multiply it by five, then um, add it to the remaining part of a number to get the new number. So yeah, if you, that sounds confusing. I'm not like a big uh, super duper math buff, even though mathematics is encoded in my DNA. It's way over my head, but this young brother, obviously the ancestors is talking to him directly. And, you know, ain't nothing new under the sun. He got dialed into that information. He unlocked the box that's buried within. And, you know, we now have some new data that it is possible. So, you know, it wasn't really too shocking to me that a, a brother was, you know, somebody, one of our people, was the one to solve that math problem because, you know, what do you expect from the people that created mathematics in the first place? So, yeah. Clap it up for this young brother. 
Chica O'Frilly. Sorry for butchering your name, but I don't know. I'm about to like tap in with some some of my Ghana brothers and sisters. Like, yeah, it's really atrocious the way I butchered that. Up. But um, anyway, give a warm narrative podcast round of applause to him. Okay, so last but not least, article, last article of the evening, then we're going to dive in some commentary and uh, give you a quick walkthrough of my um, format for the Narrative Podcast and leave you to enjoy the rest of your evening. Last article of the evening, single dad adopts five siblings so they can stay together. Um, and the brother's name is Lamont Thomas. Um, he's been uh, a foster parent, or he's, he's only 48 years old, and he's been, uh, you know, a foster parent to over 30 children. Uh, he started uh, fostering in his uh, late 20s. The brother hails from uh, Buffalo, New York. And it didn't really say, you know, how it came to acquire the siblings, but it did, was interesting facts were in it. Um, it was actually, you know, some children that got separated from a child that he fostered. So that's one of his foster children's offspring, the um, siblings, it was five. So he's uh, fostered over 200 um, children. Um, he started foster care in like 2000s. So like the early 2000s, he's been, you know, adopting children. Um, that's definitely remarkable because everybody these days with a relationship goes and, um, you know, want to make a, a family, want to pr- appropriate, do the right thing. Um, in that, I would say we, we as a people, we, uh, we shouldn't forget uh, our children that's already here. So if you cannot, you know, biologically produce children, and some people can't, male and female, you know, there's always an option. Um, adoption, adopt a child, you know, don't just abandon, like, being a parent because... You know, our children, when they're in that system, they get it the worst. So if you can, if you can help out, if you have the resources, you have the means, um, and you want, you generally want to raise a child, um, adopt a child, adopt one of our babies, and, you know, keep them up out there, uh, that corrupt system. Well, that's it for the articles for this evening on the Narrative Podcast. I'm about to dive into the commentary. Um, I'm going to just tell you why I do the articles. So, like I said, I do the articles to provide positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. I'm trying to, you know, play up and highlight our strengths. Um, Because most of these stories that I just shared, you would never know nothing about it. If he wasn't following some something uh, uh, black online, that's where I get most of my articles. I follow a lot of black stuff online. Um, on my Facebook and Instagram, I follow a lot of that. But um, again, that's all they give us online and on television is just negative frames of reference about our people and, and about our culture. You just you know, constantly get bombarded with people killing each other going to jail, you know, involved in some type of criminalistic activity, some type of amoral activity, you know, nothing positive. So, you know, that's why I share the uh, positive articles, you know, to put out that uh, positive frame of reference about our people and our culture. All right. Now to deliver my commentary 
my spiel. Now, to tell you why, why I deliver commentary, I deliver commentary uh, basically to control the narrative. When I'm delivering um, commentary, uh, you know, um, breaking news or uh, something specifically happening within our community, uh, I do it to shift and control the narrative because the way the story will break, um, they have us looking and sounding crazy. Um, I always want to put it, when I cover my commentary on any subject that has to deal with this, while we do need to take accountability for our actions, but we do as grown men and grown women need to take accountability for our actions, but never ever forget, um, you know, when it's something bad, why are we doing this something bad in the first place? And that's the perspective I usually cover my commentary from. And I most definitely will be to, uh, covering it from that perspective tonight. And then not only that, you know, history has, if history ain't taught us nothing, it's taught us this, um, you better tell your own story or you'll have your story told for you. And that's exactly what our people is going through right now having our stories told for us by people that rewrote it and stole it originally from us in the first place. So, you know, that's that's the goal, the objective, to have us looking and sounding a certain way anyway. So we got to take our power back and put things in perspective, and that's why I share commentary, you know, about breaking news is to uh, just basically put it in perspective from our perspective. So unless you've been living under a rock, we're going to dive into the commentary right now. I'm not going to uh, spend super duper long on it. I'm just giving a, a fresh perspective of it. Everybody been online talking about it, um, giving their spiel and, you know, roasting this brother and, you know, giving them the idiot of year award and just, you know, memes, all kinds of memes. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, I forgot his name that quick. I didn't write any notes. Okay, so unless you've been living under a rock, Ja Morris of the, uh, you know, Tennessee Grizzlies basketball team. Um, he got suspended for uh, brandishing a pistol on Instagram Live, and it's not the first time he did it. So, like I said, everybody been dragging them all up and down social media, you know, just ripping them a new one for doing it. And, you know, initially when I heard the story, I was in that percent. You know, what are you doing? You're getting a shot at the, a lifetime you want to sit up here and, you know, show your ass online instead of just being dignified, playing your position, playing basketball, like you struggled to get out the hood, got, you know, opportunity of a lifetime, you know? So I was in, I was in that mix and I've, um, I've kind of changed my position slightly, slightly, because like I said, you know, I'm, I'm super big on accountability as grown men and grown women, you know, you must accept and take responsibility for your own actions at all times, you know, you got to be accountable for your actions, whatever you do in life. But then also, when it comes to our people, when it comes to our people engaging or doing something negative, we can't ever, 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 ever 
forget why we're doing something negative in the first place. Like who showed us how to do that? Who taught us how to do that? Was we doing this before we let a certain group of people come around us? The answer always is no, we wasn't. No, we wasn't accepting certain lifestyles. You know, not trying to hurt um, people's feelings that belong to certain groups. But uh, no, we wasn't practicing that. We wasn't condoning it. We wasn't accepting it until we let certain people around us. Um, we don't have a history of hurting people. We don't have a history of taking things from people. We don't have a history of visiting different nations and countries and killing people. So when we act out in negative ways that's outside of our culture, you know, outside the essence of who we are as a people, never ever forget that. Where do we learn it from in the first place? So in the case of this brother, I would say that partially applies. I say partially because he knows, but then he don't know. Um, he is, a, uh, you know, an athlete. And, af you know, and athletes are, you know, a form of entertainment because, you know, athletic sporting events is like entertaining. He's an entertainer. So, you know, the way the precedent for today's entertainers in the digital world we live in, you know, it's all about the likes. It's all about the clicks. It's all about the views. I don't believe, I don't believe that he woke up and was like, I'm a flex on the gram with a firearm. I don't believe he just woke up, you know, with that idea in his mind. I'm going to pull out my pistol and go on, um, you know, Instagram Live and show the world I'm packing. I'm packing, I ain't lacking. I grip up on you. I don't think that was his intent. I think, like most entertainers, most brand new entertainers, I rephrase that, people that's new money, you know, entertainers, they're handled by people. There's different entities. After you become an entertainer, Especially in our community, you're being handled. You got, you know, different people trying to take you in, into different directions and different wrong rooms and different settings for some different money. You understand me? Where I'm going with that? Um, so basically, what I'm saying is it's kind of like a, a publicity stunt to garner likes, to garner views. Um, it's not, you know, outside of the uh, realm of possibility. It's not far-fetched. Um, they'll do it to you if you let them. If you're lacking the knowledge, they'll do it to you. Um, it seems like, especially in the NBA, it's like every single year we get a, a NBA bad boy. And you can go all the way back. We can throw it back, like, all the way back to the 60s, like, you know, one of the first bad boys in our community, NBA bad boys, they just had that swagger and non-conformity swagger is like probably like Dr. J. And then you got um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Then from there you got like um, uh, Prince Charles Barkley. You know, he just had this little attitude about him. Um, who else? Wilt Chamberlain, you know, uh, Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone, they all just had this, you know, this badass energy. Look at me, I'm, the, you know, that tough guy. Shaq, when he first came into the league, he was like super wild, 
you know, uncontrollable. Had that super wild, he was like really heavily rooted in the um, hip hop culture. And so they was kind of like side iron Shaq when he first came in. And some of his, his antics he used to pull. Uh, Allen Iverson is another one who was a bad boy, NBA bad boy. You know, they find him for the cloak for wearing cornrows. They find him for wearing French braids and uh, damn diamond earrings. So fast forward to now, they find find him for brandishing a firearm on Instagram, not aiming the weapon at nobody. Not saying he's going to kill somebody. Um, he's just like in the car, riding, vibing to some hip hop music. And by the way, you know, Ye already told us about that 808 frequency, what that does. That's real. That's real. If you don't believe that's real, I don't know what world you're living in. Like frequency modulation, that's real how it, you know, does your subconscious, like, like, stop me if you ain't never seen this. Have you ever seen somebody just, like, walking down the street having an invisible concert? They're bopping out, like, with their earbuds, and they're pantomiming. They got their fingers like the trigger. You know what I mean? They're, like, you know, they're using their finger like the trigger, and they're rapping the lyrics to whatever they listen to, whatever they're listening to, and... They're just having an invisible concert, like, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't think they look bugged out. And you just sitting up there looking at them, just um, acting out whatever they're listening to. That's real, though. So yeah, so like, I don't want to uh, hold you up too long on that. I'm just offering a, a different perspective on that. I think it's like a publicity stunt. He garnered views, he garnered attention. Um, he's going to get slid a bag somewhere. He's going to be playing basketball again. They said he got suspended for six months. I mean, we heard uh, it was like his apology was like pre typed. You know what I'm saying? It's like premeditated. He said, Yeah, I did some stupid. Sound like he was reading off a piece of paper. You know, it's like you were just like pre-planned. Pre but about sports in general, all sporting events, all there are is um, distractions. That's all, all sporting events are. All entertainment events, like annual things they have every single year um, in sports, you know, football, the, uh, Super Bowl. Uh, NBA, the playoffs, uh, Major League Baseball, um, forget uh, what it's called, um, you know, the baseball game. I'm not into baseball. I forget what it's called. Um, World Series, golf, the PGA tournaments, like all that, if you notice, is all a distraction. Because all those events, you know, is designed to distract the people, the general people, especially here in America, from affairs, political affairs of state, because there's always something politically political happening around, centered around, you know, all this, you know, centered around all the events that, you know, that they take place in all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like there's some political we need to be paying attention to like during Super Bowl, like during um, um, the World Series, during the, uh, you know, the final, uh, the NBA Finals. Like, believe me, it's something political, some type of legislation, uh, boxing too. You know, or it's, if it's not political, it's something like happening with uh, the planet. They're coming up with a new strain of a V word, 
um, some something from the FDA, something big pharma just invented, something. You know, like news happens 24-7, but it's usually around sporting events. You know, that something's popping off. It's usually around, um, you know, like musical events, movies, like when they have their award shows, something's happening around the, the, that time frame too. It's always something like that to distract us. But um, yeah, that's slight. That's slight. And it's a fake out. And I don't believe none of it. But um, yeah, it's just a fake out. I think it was um, premeditated. He's an entertainer. He's being handled like several entities. When you become an entertainer, these days you're no longer your your own person. You're no longer your government name. Now you're like legit a piece of property. All these different people to handle you got an interest in you. They got some stock in you. And they're going to use your brand to generate as much income as they can for as long as they can, as long as you're signed to them, you know, they're going to take and do whatever they want to to your public image. As long as you sign that pen for a bag, they're going to have you in all kind of mess. You know, they do it to uh, athletes, they do it to uh, rappers, they do it to R&B singers, um, do it to actors, actresses, like after you're entertainer, you're no longer your own person. That's the, that's the trade-off, but they don't tell you when you're trying to pursue your dream. You're not on your own time anymore. Well, that's all. That's my only perspective. I'm looking at it from. That's. I just want to uh to deliver a fresh perspective. Is everybody else thing? You know, drug them all up and down social media, roasting them and everything. I'm just giving like a fresh, you know, perspective. Um, and like I said, I'm a big fan of a, a heavy fan of accountability. I believe as you know, grown adult men and women. You must take accountability for your actions. Uh, but like I said, you know, I just feel that situation was a little too contrived. Uh, I believe somebody got in his ear, told him to do it. Somebody like a, uh, whoever's hand, handling his press image, I think they're called PR reps. So image consultants, like, all oh, that's a factor. In this, in this particular case. Well, that's it for my commentary about that one. I had another one, but I think I'll save it for this weekend. Something else that just happened. I think that would be my speaking point um, this weekend for the full um, broadcast of the narrative podcast. Speaking of that, I think I'm, I got just enough time to walk you through my full format of a full episode of the narrative podcast. I do that, plug whatever I got going on, and then leave you fine people to enjoy the rest of your evening. So let's go. Here we are. Um, this is what you will be you know, to, you will be in for when you join me this weekend for a full episode of the Narrative Podcast. So let's go. Uh, first of all, um, a full episode is just kind of like this episode. Uh, the only difference is I divide it into sections. And like I said, you know, my platform, I try to do time sensitive material. I don't want to just talk and talk and talk. Um, I want to have an actual point to it. I want my um, content to be cohesive and I want it to be digestible. I don't want to shoot above your head. I don't want to, you know, just make it just, you know, weird. I want it to be practical and I want it to resonate with you. 
Because when I first started podcasting, I had no idea what direction I want to take it in. No, I, no idea what I want to do. Um, I just basically used to hit record and just talk and talk and just go in. As a result of that, I didn't have a listening audience. So I took a little step back. Um, I revised my content. I was like, okay, you know, I just kept on playing with it and found something that worked. Uh, I, and what worked was, you know, just um, dividing it into uh, sections because I can touch on a lot of different subjects and then keep you interested, keep you entertained, and also, you know, teach you something. So, you know, that's what why I have my uh, content broken down into sections, each section you know, has a speaking point, and I try to, uh, my very best to time each section so that I don't just, you know, ramble and drone on and on and on without a, uh, without a point. Because, you know, if you're just rambling, it's not a podcast, it's just a glorified rant. And I want my content to uh, resonate with my listeners. So, here we go, diving in, I'm going to walk you through my format to give you the uh, full experience of the narrative podcast for a full episode of it. All right, so first section is my promo section. Now, my promo section, what I'm doing is I'm giving uh, original people that own or operate their own business the opportunity to reach out to me to get, you know, free promotion for their business, product, or service. You know, whatever they're selling, um, whatever they got going on, if they need some free promotion for it, reach out to me. And I promote it 110% for free on my platform. You can see my previous episodes uh, for the details on how to uh, reach out to me. I'm not going to do it here on my live because, like I said, it's time sensitive. Um... I don't want to, um, you know, spend over an hour on a broadcast ever. So I want to make my life super duper brief. I don't, I don't never really want to ex- exceed 45 minutes on a live. But I'm kind of over 45 this evening. But um, anyway, so yeah, that's what my uh, first section is, is just a... Uh, free promotion section to, you know, do my part to help circulate the original people dollar in the original people community by giving original people that own or operate their own business or have their own product service or brand that needs promoting the opportunity, you know, to get it promoted. And I'm not charging any money. All publicity is good publicity and it's free. So why not? utilize my platform to do that. All right, um, second section. The second section is a contest section. It's designed to basically be an incentive, reward people that's been listening to me from day one, as well as um, the effort to attract new listeners to me. And basically it's also... um, you know, listener participation to get you engrossed in the content, you know, give you something to do, like basically like some homework um, until I get a hotline or, you know, a more interpersonal way to uh, connect with you. Um, I'm just giving you the opportunity to win the prize. Uh, and the prize I'm offering currently for this contest that I'm hosting is called a Chew On This Contest. And I'm giving away a bulk supply of your favorite snack simply by participating in the contest topic. And the contest topic is share your most recent shopping wild black experience. Cool, cool. All right, on to my, you know, this is actually the authentic first section. The uh, first two are just a warm up, the get you ensnared, the uh, reel you in. So my first authentic section is the highlight section. 
And in the highlight section, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting businesses owned and operated by original people, um, the types of original people, business owners that I highlight are um, just like you and I, regular people. Um, they came from the bottom, they came from the mud, they got tired of working a nine to five job. Um, they wanted to start their own business. They didn't have, you know, much in the way of education, much in the way of finance. Uh, but somehow, they start their own business. And I do that to show, to project a positive frame of reference about entrepreneurialism um, because there were, we don't have a lot of uh, positive frames of reference about entrepreneurialism um, given to us. The few uh, frames of reference that we have about entrepreneurialism on television are pretty much um, dysfunctional. You know, that's what they focus the lens on. They, uh, they focus the lens on the dysfunction, um, the fighting, the name calling, and the violence. That's what they focus the lens on. You focus so much on the violence, you, you forget, you know, this person's a business owner. This person is providing, uh, you know, opportunities for other people that normally wouldn't have opportunity wouldn't have a job, wouldn't have, you know, would just be lost in the sauce if not for this person, but for ratings and views and whatever, they focus on the dysfunction and the violence and, you know, the bigger picture gets lost for the ratings. So on my platform, what I do is I give you, you know, the dynamic of entrepreneur making it um, a regular nine to fiver that got tired of being a nine to fiver and wanted to uh, create opportunity for themselves as well as other people. Uh, many of the people that I uh, feature in the highlight section are are businesses, are family owned and operated. So that there, I'm giving you another positive frame of reference. I'm giving you the positive frame of reference about generational wealth. Um, also, the uh, business owners that I feature in the highlight section, uh, they either pay into a nonprofit organization or they have their own nonprofit organization. So all the people that I highlight on the highlight section, they do some type of philanthropy, some type of uh, community outreach, giving back to the community to some small capacity. And then the last qualifying factor of the businesses that I highlight in the highlight section is um, they align up with my theme and my current theme is the season of spring so all the businesses that will be featured in the highlight section for this weekend are businesses that I think of when I think of the season of spring if that makes any sense. Alright on to my next section. My next section is called the spotlight section. In the spotlight section, what I'm doing in that section is creating the healthy habit of spotlighting uh, a brother or a sister. I'm creating the healthy habit of saying something nice about your brother or saying something nice about your sister instead of jumping on um, social media, dragging them all up and down social media, um, you know, kicking dirt on their name, airing out the dirty laundry, you know, just everything, all the messiness we engage in online. Like, I want to try to break that habit and create the healthy habit of saying something nice about your brother or sister. Um, so basically, the in the uh, spotlight section is just basically a section where I'm giving a brother or sister their roses while they're here. The people that I spotlight in the spotlight section are usually entertainers. Um, in the field of, you know, acting, you know, actors, actresses, athletes, comedians, uh, public figures, religious figures, as well as, um, you know, uh, influencers and just basically anybody that has a public, a public polarizing platform and they speak on the cause um, unapologetically, 
they do some type of philanthropy, they do some type of giving back. Um, they basically make us as a people look good in some small capacity, either through their charity work or the way they carry and conduct themselves. Um, but definitely speaking on the cause, definitely being having uh, solution based answers to everything we got going on or just the way they carry and conduct, them, uh, carry and conduct themselves to make us, you know, to give us that positive, that visual uh, recognition that we need, that positive um, frame of reference about our people and our culture. So that's what's. Um, you know, I'm attempting to uh, accomplish in the uh, spotlight section. And then not for nothing, I created the way for spotlighting. Because before I added the spotlight section to my podcast, the narrative podcast, nobody, n n nobody was spotlighting anybody. So now all of a sudden after I had a spotlight section, now everybody, when they have guests on their show or, uh, you know, a celebrities coming through, they be like, today on the blah, 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 blah show, and we'll be spotlighting, you know, this person, that person, and nobody was doing that before I had a spotlight section to my podcast. Nobody. Nobody was doing that. But anyway, I just had to make that known. That uh, to not just you know the general public, but everybody, all content creators. If you feel like you're not, when I you know feel like when am I going to get my viral moment? When am I going to go viral? When am I going to go viral? Like if you're creating content and you're consistent with it, somebody's listening to you. Somebody's listening to you. If you're consistent with your uploads and consistent with your content, somebody listening to you. Because somebody's obviously listening to me. With all these spotlight sections, um, all my little nuances I say on my show, the way I talk, the way I you know, deliver my content, the way I accent, pronounce certain words. And, you know, it's not a coincidence. I'm telling that to all content creators. You think you're bugging, like, yeah, they're listening to you. When you think, you know, somebody's using something you said, they are. You're not crazy. You know, but just, you know, it, 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 it just be happy. So that's what I am. I'm happy right now because that's my ultimate takeaway. That I want it from the spotlight section for it to catch on like that because I'm trying to create the healthy habit of saying something nice about your brother or saying something nice about your sister. So, you know, I got the digital receipts to prove it. But, um, yeah, that's what the spotlight section is all about. In the real way. All right. So after the spotlight section, I transition to the health and wellness section. In the health and wellness section, what I'm doing is I'm giving out health and wellness tips. So the reason why I'm giving out health and wellness tips because, you know, health is wealth. And currently, my people is under fire. We're under attack. We're being attacked mentally, physically, and spiritually. So what I want to do in the health and wellness section is just give out tips how to stay armored up in all the areas that were being attacked physically, mentally, and spiritually. So I give out those tips. So what types of tips would I be giving out on the physical side of it? I might hit you with the health benefits of a fruit, vegetable, plant, herb, root, extract, um, basically something you can eat or apply topically to stay in peak physical shape. Um, or some type of physical exercise you can do to stay in peak physical shape. Um, on the mental side of it, to uh, stay, you know, keep your mental, keep your mind um, straight, keep your mental health right, like mental breathing, uh, you know, uh, my, excuse me, mindful breathing, 
uh, meditation, controlled breathing, um, basically, you know, things that uh, will keep you from uh, not stressing out and keeping your mental health where it needs to be. Um, spiritual things you can do like praying and meditating um, and other spiritual practices that you can do to guard your spirit. Then also um, things uh, I might for uh, hit you with a wild card, uh, do some metaphysical stuff, you know, a metaphysical tip, um, quantum law, quantum theory tip, you know, universal law tip, you know, that type of thing in the health and wellness um, section of the Narrative Podcast. The next is my speaking point of the day. And my speaking point of the day is just basically like the commentary I did deliver this evening. Um, it's basically my um, commentary on breaking news, whether it's something directly in our community or something, you know, happening globally. The perspective I give my commentary is from the perspective of the way I delivered the commentary this evening. It's from our perspective, you know, because the media have us looking and sounding crazy. So I just, you know, deliver, deliver it from the perspective of, you know, respecting our intelligence, um, giving us the benefit of the doubt, um, you know, just, you know, trying to make us, paint us in the uh, most positive light possible. Because like, like I said, you know, it's the media's job to paint us in the most horrendous, um, you know, vile light as possible. They want to do everything. They always wanted to, you know, make us come across destitute, uh, downtrodden, and, you know, deprived. So, I want to come at it from the perspective of, you know, playing up our strengths, um, making us appear regal, you know, exposing the powers that be, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the speaking point of the day. You know, that's what that section is about. And then my final section of the narrative podcast, I close it out with a final thought or a final word of the day. I flip back and forth. I call it something different every episode. Some episodes I call it the final thought or the final word. Um, basically what that is, is just, um, you know, something uh, witty, something insightful, um, something that will garner attention or garner focus, something to have you just ponder about something. Some that will resonate with you, some wise words, basically a jam, a pearl of wisdom, or whatever you want to call it. You know, advice, jam, pearl of wisdom, or whatever. And that's how I close my show. And that's the uh, full narrative podcast experience. So thanks for listening to my live. Join me this weekend for another full episode of the Narrative Podcast. Uh, what I got going on right now, I just recently wrote a book called The Black Card. Um, go check that out. Go to poetizer.com and purchase you a copy of The Black Card. It's in the Poetizer uh, bookstore on poetizer.com. Uh, and what it is, it's a book of poetry. It's about 30 um, insightful poems about our experience as a people, positive and negative, very creative, very insightful. You will love it. Go cop it right now. It's called The Black Card in the Poetizer bookstore on poetizer.com. Um, I also have a personal poetry blog called Hawes' Poetry Corner on blogger.com, and the address is www.mrhawes'blogs.com. My tagline for it is Hawes' Poetry Corner, Poetry with a Passion, Poetry for All Occasions, and when you read it, you'll find out why, and how you support that is basically going to that link and sharing poems, a poem or all poems from Hawes' Poetry Corner to your favorite platforms, to your Facebook, to your YouTube, to your Twitter, Tumblr, whatever you got, share it.